Hey friends and welcome back to my channel. I am Caitlin and this is where I teach you everything I know about sewing and we learn more together along the way. Today I am sharing my fall capsule wardrobe, at least what I have of it and then what I need to make and kind of taking you through that process. So I actually have never really had a capsule wardrobe before, which is kind of silly to me and also not exactly accurate. I do identify as a minimalist, so my closet is pretty bare as it is. If you've watched some of my previous closet videos, you probably gathered that, that I just don't have a lot of clothes. So basically, I wear everything that's in my closet, you know, every season kind of thing. Obviously, shorts I don't wear so much in the winter. We live in Canada. I'm on the prairies, and it gets freaking cold here, so we have four distinct seasons. And I, I struggle with having a capsule wardrobe and I struggle with having like a grown up wardrobe because I'm a stay at home mom for the most part. I mean, I have my online sewing business and I also uh, run the, the logistics and the, um, like the office side of our construction business. But for the most part, I'm a stay at home mom. We keep the kids home with us uh, all the time. So, Unless I'm like going out for groceries once a week or running them to, you know, art class or gymnastics um, or the library, I don't really go out and nobody really sees me. So I don't really like dr get dressed on a daily basis. I a lot of times just throw on sweatpants if I'm canning or I say like athleisure workout shorts on for cleaning the house or just sometimes I even just stay in my pajamas all day and we read books or we learn about something or whatever. So I don't have a typical life, <laughs> I guess, and I don't have a typical wardrobe. So, I do want to get dressed every day. That is something that I'm, I'm going to try to be better at because I want to wear these clothes. And, and when I make these clothes, it's always, I'm always thinking, I need to make something that I'm going to wear and all of these things. And then when it comes to daily dressing, I don't wear them because I want to save them for an, like an occasion. I don't want to wear them out and get them all, you know, worn out, which is so silly because why would I keep something in my wardrobe for like four or five years to um, maybe wear it five to 10 times when I could be wearing it several times and really get the love out of it and, you know, wear it while it's still in style. And we'll talk about that a little bit too. But for the most part, my wardrobe is pretty basic. I don't go to an office. I don't, you know, go to the opera every weekend. I just have a pretty laid back life, I guess, where I don't need to get dressed all the time. For when I'm at home with my kids, I can still be wearing comfy dresses and I can still look put together for those days where I'm not like in the garden or cutting trees or canning. I can wear nicer clothes at home and still enjoy them rather than just wearing sweatshirts and an old t-shirt I got from a fundraiser walk or something like that. So with that being said, let's get in to see what my wardrobe consists of. So here are the pieces I chose to be kind of my capsule wardrobe from my closet already. So what I did is I took all my fall clothes or what I would want to wear in the fall that happened to also be in my color palette, which is this is about 85% of my wardrobe as it is. So I pulled out all the fall things and then I pared it down to match with my color palette. And then I'm seeing some, some pretty obvious patterns and gaps as well. So I'm left with a red tank top, a burgundy tee, an oatmeal, and a white tee. Those are both graphic tees. And then a cream long sleeve shirt. I also have this raspberry and black short sleeve blouse. This one is one that I kind of always debate on getting rid of and I never do, but I think this time it's going to go. I also have this coral crossover peplum top and then I also have this magenta slash fuchsia uh, paper cut patterns array top. Love this thing. I also have two Natalie Seamwork Natalies here. So this one actually that I'm wearing in the same video is the cream and red one. And then I also have the orange, brown, yellow, and green one. It's a little bit louder. And I actually have a video where I did full bicep adjustments on those ones. Then I have my forest green Sheridan sweater. Love this thing. And I'm really struggling with not making another one because I don't technically need another sweater, but we'll see what happens. 
then I have this turquoise turtleneck and this actually ends up getting called the the color is just a bit cool for me I think and I just don't really love the way I look in it then I have three pairs of pants here I am greatly lacking in the pants department I have a pair of camo cropped pants and a pair of navy cropped pants as well as a pair of vintage jeans and I also have another pair of jeans to put in here which will be getting replaced so I don't know you can include it or not then I have this pinkish beige fumetere skirt love this thing been wearing it a ton perfect for fall I also have this mustard and white circle skirt I was so into this fabric it's not technically my color so that's why I made it into a bottom but the waistband didn't turn out and so I ripped the waistband off thinking I would do a new one and now I can't find what I thought I had as excess fabric for the waistband so this is taken out and I don't know what's going to happen then I have this navy swiss dot jumpsuit love this thing it's not really fallish though so I'm not sure that it's going to get any wear it is a very very light fabric then I have a cream sweater dress. Love this one. I don't have a lot of opportunity to wear it, but again, maybe I just need to start wearing it just because. And then is my avocado dyed potato stamped Ruth dress. <laughs> this piece has been through several iterations of life with me, and I can link those videos down below. Next is possibly my most favorite piece in my wardrobe. And that is this chestnut and multicolor wilder gown. This is an atelier brunette viscose. And it's just like, it's just, I just love wearing this thing. It doesn't really like look the greatest on me, but it's still one of my most favorite things to wear. I also have this denim vest. I don't know. I don't really wear it. It's another one of those things that I just don't get rid of because I think I'll wear it. And it does work in my wardrobe. I just don't really wear it that much. I did wear it at Thanksgiving. So I don't know. We'll keep it a little bit longer. Next up is this charcoal long hooded cardigan. Don't love this piece, but it does work well in my wardrobe. Um, gray isn't really one of my colors, don't really wear it, but this is a great piece. And I think my plan is to eventually replace it. But for now, the amount of wear I wear cardigans, which is basically none, I'm gonna keep it for until I can replace it. Then I have another layering piece, this beige long cardigan. This is like a, this is a simplicity pattern. It's, it's really acts as a duster, like a sweater weight duster. Again, I don't wear it a ton because I don't wear cardigans that much. So maybe I could just keep this and get rid of the charcoal one. Okay, a few pieces left. This teal jacket, I guess. It's not really a blazer, but it's more of like a an office appropriate jacket. I bought this. A long time ago back in my like working days and I don't wear it that much and I don't know why so I'm gonna try to wear it more because it does kind of go with my wardrobe it is maybe a bit cool I'm not sure on that exactly but I'm going to keep it and see how it goes if not I think I'm gonna have to donate it even though I do enjoy wearing it then I have my bud shacket love this thing wear it a ton probably not the best silhouette for me but you know I wear it it is wool and it is kind of itchy so I don't wear it over everything but it is a nice layering piece and finally I have this oversized chambray shirt love this thing wear it tied up I wear it as a layering piece it seems to get a lot of use in my closet okay so that's it you guys have seen it I kind of pulled everything that goes together what these colors I want to go with um, and now I need to fill some gaps so I'm figuring out what I want in my wardrobe and pulling out the fabrics from my fabric stash that would work and then I'm going to cull the fabric stash and yeah really figure out what I want to make and then get to making Okay, so here's everything from my stash. You guys know I have made a commitment to not buy new fabric this year. So this is everything from my stash that would work for this capsule. And I basically just did this based on color as well as texture. So there's a little bit of everything in here, but I know I need to focus on pants for sure. And then the rest is just gonna be filler pieces. So here I'm just going through and deciding what I wanna keep and what I wanna get rid of and you're gonna see the outcome in a bit. And as I'm going through, I'm thinking, 
what do I need as well as what is going to work. So for example, lace, I don't really need anything for fall that's made of lace. If it's a small piece of yardage that's only really gonna work for shorts, then it's not going to work for fall and winter. So that's gonna get put back into the stash. I have my, my colors card here. I talk more about this in my Christy Russell colors video. I can link that below. And I'm just going through and deciding what is going to work for me on top and or on the bottom. And there's a few pieces I was undecided about or they were similar to one another and I figured I really only need like one of them. So that's what I'm doing here is going through and deciding which one's going to be best. If you are also looking to maybe sew in a capsule wardrobe or something like that, there Seamwork has um, kind of like a class or it takes you through creating a wardrobe, a capsule wardrobe, as well as like a little workbook. So I will link that below. I do have a discount code if you are not a Seamwork member and I get a free month every time somebody signs up. So that is great. Thank you if you sign up through that. I'm also going to point you to Tomcat Stitchery here on YouTube. Whitney has been sewing in capsules for a long time. Her channel is all about sewing, but more with the fashion side of it. And I really love her channel. She actually has a free capsule wardrobe planner type printout when you sign up for her newsletter. So I will link her channel down below as well. For me, I decided to just kind of make up my own list. So this includes what I want in my wardrobe, you know, how many tops, how many pants, how many blouses, how many tanks, bottoms, etc. And then I kind of made a checkbox and went through my wardrobe on what I have and then what I'm missing and what I need to make and maybe thrift or something like that. I also put down my personal style. So I just kind of wrote a bunch of words that I like to identify with in terms of wardrobe. And then I went in after and I narrowed it down to about three words that I really feel are going to help me when I'm making my pieces. And the three words I finally settled on were unique, shapely, meaning kind of tailored, but it can also be oversized as long as I still have a shape and don't look just like a blob, as well as my third word is cute. So I like the word chic as well, but not everything I wear needs to be chic. I really like to it to be a cute outfit, something that somebody would stop me on the street and say, wow, that is cute. Where did you get that? And then I'm just, deciding on colors. So this is mainly based on the pieces that are already in my wardrobe, but I am also going through and deciding on what I maybe want to bring in based on the fabrics that I chose from my stash. My color palette based on the colors I had done by Christy Russell, and I do have a video on this. I think it's a pretty helpful video, so I will link that down below as well. It's also a closet clean out video, so it kind of goes exactly with what I'm talking about here. And so the colors I ended up going with are a navy, a cream, a burgundy, a chestnut, and a teal slash green, as well as the accent color of orange and yellow. All right, now I'm gonna share what I'm gonna make with each of these fabrics. First up is this classic striped woven fabric. This is a really lightweight, I would say cotton. I have about two and a half meters of this and it's about 106 centimeters wide. It does have some stains to work around, but I think I'm going to try to make the Hawthorne dress from Seamwork Patterns. And I'm not sure if I'm going to do the collar. So I might actually make it collarless and I would do the, the longer sleeve. Now this pattern says I need about four and a half meters. So we're gonna see what we can do about not doing a full circle skirt if I indeed don't have enough fabric. I usually have to alter their patterns quite a bit, so we may be okay without the full amount. Next up, I have this red Ponty. It's fairly thin and has a little bit of stretch. I've got about two and a half meters of this and it's 150 centimeters wide, so quite a bit. And I'm thinking, I was thinking a jumpsuit, but I'm kind of falling out of love with jumpsuits. So now I'm thinking the Seamwork Erica. Let me know what you guys think. Should I add the flouncy extra piece to it or just leave it as a classic wrap dress? I don't know if I need two new dresses, but we'll see. We have four theater events that we're going to between now and the new year. So I'm thinking between that and Christmas parties, two nice little Christmassy holiday red dresses will be really nice to have. 
Okay, this fun navy polka dot. Isn't it just so cute? So this is very, very limited stretch fabric. It is a knit, but it has very limited stretch. So I'm thinking of actually the Seymour Callahan pants, but I'm going to omit the pin tucks because I don't want to skew the polka dots. I want it to be a nice polka dot pair of trousers. And I'm thinking I will do the the member bonus where it has the facing instead of the waistband. So I am limited on this fabric. I only have about 136 centimeters of it by 144 centimeters. So we'll see I should be able to get the Callahan pants. This is non-directional print. It should be pretty simple and adding that pair of a little bit dressier trouser to my wardrobe will be I think really helpful. Pick this beauty up on Distashify video linked below but it is this beautiful kind of chestnutty cut of faux leather and I have a, quite a bit of this. It's about three meters by 140 centimeters and my plan is from the beginning since I saw these online to make a pair of Megan Nielsen Dawn jeans but the wide leg version. Now I was thinking cropped but now I'm thinking full length just so that I can wear them through winter as well. And yeah let me know what you think. They are on the list but they're not next on the list. This is a bull denim, a uh, nice deep forest green, and I was hoping there would be enough to make a pair of Dawn jeans, but there's just not, like not even close. I should get a pair of shorts out of it in the spring, but I did substitute this with a more of a pine color from my stash. That has turned into Meg Nielsen Dawn jeans. In fact, by the time you see this, they should be done, and that video will be coming out soon. Now here's a nice lightweight cotton, probably about a cotton poplin weight. It is a uh, cloud nine fabric a sarah watson design called grasslands and i just am obsessed with it it's probably not technically in my color palette which is why i've decided to make a jacket with it a nice unlined unstructured jacket and since i'm not purchasing new patterns this year i've chosen the paula jacket from fabric dash dashstore.com it is a free pattern and i think it's going to work perfectly for what i want if I was purchasing patterns, I probably would go with the Friday Pattern Co. Ilford jacket. Classic dark wash denim. I believe this is actually a vintage cut of fabric as well. This is going to be a nice pair of Megan Nielsen Dawn jeans, probably the straight leg full length. Just your classic pair of jeans because I am in desperate need. Now here's the wild card, black background. I have basically zero black pieces in my wardrobe, but all the colors on here are exactly my color palette. And this is a stunning cut of fabric. However, it is only about one meter by one meter. So what do we think? Can we do fall flowers, winter flowers? Can we do that on a dark background? Should I save them for summer and make some shorts? Should I try and eke out um, kind of an A-line skirt? You guys, if you have any one meter wonders, please leave them in the comments for me below or let me know if I should just wait till spring and use these for shorts. I just wanted to, just wanted to take a second and talk about not so much sustainable fashion because I do have an entire series on that and I will link that down below. Those videos are getting quite old already but I they are very very close to my heart global soul fashion awareness is what the series is called or the playlist is called and from that I want to chat about the styles of clothing so it's kind of funny because as sewists we see the runway looks and that same day we can create something that goes with that so we are we're kind of on track with the runway and then a couple, two, three years later, ready to wear kind of catches up to the runway, right? We may be seen as like avant-garde. So for example, right now, clothing with two different prints is really in style. So half of your shirt might be one print and then the other half another print or color or whatever. My daughter got a pair of shorts gifted to her that are two different colors. We've been doing that for a few years. And it's I find it kind of funny because when you first start wearing things like that, people are like, what the heck? Or shackets, shackets were another thing. And they're just like, what are you wearing? And then a couple years later, that's all you can find in the stores. And nobody's like, oh, you were ahead of the time. Cause by then you're on to something else already. So I find that kind of funny. But I also want to say, I don't lean into trends because again, I want my clothing to last. I want it to be staples, something that can go with other pieces in my wardrobe, even if things change. So that being said, 
I do kind of, I enjoy watching some of those videos. I don't, I don't follow uh, like fashion shows or, or trends or really anything like that, but I do notice things in online or in the stores or wherever of what's, you know, what's going on. So I do kind of see what I like. Pattern designers are also usually ahead of the curve. They kind of follow the fashion trends as well. So when the runway comes out, they're working on a pattern to match that and then they can have it out and ready, way ahead of ready to wear because ready to wear is obviously planning their collections sometimes years in advance. So uh, that being said, again, I like to just sew what's practical, uh, again, minimalist. So it's things that are gonna work for me, my body, and, and things that I like and want to wear. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching this. I hope it was fun and just a little bit of lighthearted content for your day and a little bit of a good way for me to get back in the swing of making videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.